In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up an integral that will help us to find the area that's bounded by three curves or three graphs. So we're given the equation of the three graphs, but we don't know the points of intersection. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw a rough sketch of these graphs. So y equals x squared, we know it's a graph that opens up like this. Now, because there's a 1 fourth in front of the x squared, because it's less than 1, the graph is going to open in a much wider fashion. So instead of being narrow, it's going to be wider. Now, the graph y equals square root of x looks like this, but it's been shifted two units up. So it's going to start from positive 2, and then it will gradually go in that direction. Now, this graph, the one in the middle, we have x to the first power, so we're dealing with a straight line. And we have a negative in front of that x term. So that's going to be a line that's going in this direction. When x is 0, we can see y is 2. So notice that this graph is in slope intercept form. We can see m is negative 1 half, and the y-intercept, or b, is 2. So this graph is going to start here, and it's going to go down in this direction. So right now, we can see that this is the area that's bounded by all three curves. So there's three points of interest that we need to find out. Here's one point of intersection, here's the second point of intersection, and here's the third one. Now the first point of intersection, we know the x value is 0. We need to find the other two. And what we're going to do is we're going to break this into two regions. So the left side, we'll call it area 1, and the right side, area 2. But first, let's find the points of intersection. So at this point of intersection, we have the line negative 1 half x plus 2. That is y is equal to that. And we have the curve underneath it, 1 fourth x squared. So in order to find the point of intersection, we're going to have to set these two equations equal to each other because they will have the same y value at the point of intersection. So we're going to have negative 1 half x plus 2 is equal to 1 fourth x squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all the fractions. I'm going to multiply everything by 4. So negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 fourth times 4 is 1. So we get this. Now I'm going to move everything from the left side to the right side. So this becomes x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now it looks like we can factor this trinomial. So two numbers that multiply to negative 8 but add to the middle coefficient 2 that's going to be positive 4 and negative 2 so this is going to factor out to be in x minus 2 x plus 4 negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 negative 2 plus 4 gives us positive 2 so using a zero product property and setting each factor equal to 0 if we set x minus 2 equal to 0 we'll get x is equal to 2 if we set x plus 4 equal to 0 and solve for x, we'll get that x is equal to negative 4. So at negative 4, these two graphs will intersect, but we don't need that point. This is the one that we need. At x equals 2 is where they're going to meet. Now remember, this graph is not drawn to scale, but as long as we can identify the points of intersection, and where the shaded region is going to be. 
even if we don't have the most accurate graph, we can still get the right answer. Now, we need to find the next point of intersection. And so we need to set this equation equal to this one. So we're going to set these two equations equal to each other. Because this top curve represents this equation. So we're going to have the square root of x plus 2 is equal to 1 fourth x squared. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract both sides by 2. So instead of having positive 2, I'm going to have negative 2 on the right side. Now, to get rid of the fractions, I'm going to multiply everything by 4. So this is going to be 4 square root x is equal to x squared minus 8. Now, to get rid of the square root symbol, I'm going to have to square both sides. On the left, 4 squared is 16. The square root of x squared is just x. On the right side, I'm going to, I need to FOIL this expression. So here we're going to have x to the fourth. This is going to be negative 8x squared plus another negative 8x squared, which is negative 16x squared. And then negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. This is going to be a little challenging to factor. You could solve these equations with a graphing calculator, or you can plug in numbers until it works. So moving the term to the left side, the 16x, it will be negative 16x on the right side. Now, let's see if we can factor this polynomial. So I'm going to factor out the GCF. We're going to factor by grouping. So let's take out the GCF or the greatest common factor in the first two terms, which is going to be x squared. x to the fourth divided by x squared, that's x squared. And negative 16x squared divided by x squared is negative 16. In the last two terms, I'm going to factor out negative 16. So negative 16x divided by negative 16 is x. Positive 64 divided by negative 16 is negative 4. Now, x squared minus 16, we have the difference of two squares. So to factor it, it's going to be the square root of x squared, which is x, and the square root of 16 is 4. One of them is going to be positive, the other will be negative. Now, notice that we have a common factor, and that is x minus 4. So we could factor out x minus 4. Once we take out x minus 4 from this term, we'll be left with what's left over, and that is x squared times x plus 4. And once we take it out out of the second term, we're left with negative 16. Now, we don't really have to worry about anything here. All we need to do is set this factor equal to 0. Then the entire thing will be equal to 0. So when we set x minus 4 equal to 0, we'll get x is equal to 4. And that is going to be the point of intersection that we're looking for. And we could verify it. If you plug in 4 into this equation, 4 squared is 16 times 1 fourth, you get y is equal to 4. And if you plug in 4 here, the square root of 4 is 2 plus another 2, you get y is equal to 4. So we have the y value at this point. So that's the point 4 comma 4. 
So now that we have the points of intersection, we can find the area. By the way, if you need to find the area between two curves, let's say this is F and this is G, and we want to find the area between points A and B, the area for that region is going to be the definite integral from A to B of the top function f of x minus the bottom function g of x. So that's how we can calculate the area of the shaded region using integrals. So let's calculate area 1. For area 1, the top function is this equation, square root x plus 2. The bottom function is the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 2. So for a1, it's going to be the integral from a to b, that is from 0 to 2, of the top function square root x plus 2 minus the bottom function, which is negative 1 half x plus 2. The parentheses here is important because this negative sign needs to be distributed. And let's not forget the dx term. Now for area 2, we're going to integrate it from 2 to 4. The top function is the square root of x plus 2 again, the bottom part is going to be 1 fourth x squared. So we're going to integrate this from 2 to 4, and this is going to be root x plus 2 minus 1 fourth x squared. So the total area is the sum of a1 and a2. So it's the first integral from 0 to 2 square root x plus 2 minus negative 1 half x plus 2. And then it's going to be plus the second integral from 2 to 4 of the square root of x plus 2 minus 1 fourth x squared. So that is the integral or the integral expressions that we need in order to get the total area of the shaded region.